point. Uh, this might, no tofu and wheatgrass for these guys. This is all about the big game. Tim Ferriss, Steve Rinella from Meat Eater. Join us live. Oh, yummy, yum, yum. Yep, they're tasting some of the goods from rabbit to, wait for it, squirrel. We'll be right back. Oh. Question for you as you're eating your Wheaties this morning. Are you a meat eater? A real meat eater? If you are, these guys here at the table might still put you to shame. So meat eater is all about big adventure, big game hunting, and big meals. Experienced hunter and outdoorsman Steve Ranella starts his third season this, way, uh, this weekend, sort of taking a walk on the wild side. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal are and what we're made of. It's about sustenance, survival. It's about connecting to the land. It's about the purity of the challenge. It's about life. In each and every one of us, there is a primal instinct to hunt and consume. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. You know, I'm a meat eater too, but I think the whole thing's a little bit different here. Steve Brunella <laughs> is here along with Tim Ferriss, the best-selling author of The 4-Hour Chef and all those other great 4-Hour books in the series. He travels with Steve on the show to the most remote corner of Alaska. They try to catch some caribou. Before I start, I have to say there's a bunch of plates here in front of us uh -huh. that have some squirrel on them. We will get to squirrel in a moment because oh, it's yes, never too will. early in the morning for, for squirrel. squirrel. <laughs> but, uh, but Steve, let me start with this. You know, who, who would you sh say the show is for? I, I look at it two ways where one I want to provide great entertainment to, to the millions of hunters out there and I want to give them you know articulate back to them some of the reasons that they like to hunt on the flip side I also like to try to appeal to the non hunting audience you know 95% of American adults do not hunt and in some way our ability to continue to hunt relies on their perceptions of what we do so we call it like hunter recruitment or, or hunting PR is what I like my show to do. And, and that was kind of one of the great things about Tim coming on, is Tim was not a hunter. Yeah, I wanted to ask, so, so Mr. Four Hour Work Week here, I mean, had you ever been out and about with a gun, shooting deer, anything like this? Never. Never. I'd, I'd grown up as an anti-hunter. So I grew up on Long Island, and we had injured deer come across our property that had been shot with bows. And I developed this early aversion to hunting and hunters. I had never, ever had uh, any desire to go hunting. So what happened once you guys, you go out far, far out in, in Alaska a couple months back to shoot this, and, and what was that like? You, you came awfully close to a grizzly bear, I hear. Multiple grizzly bears. Yeah. Multiple. Yeah. It, was, it was an incredible experience. For me, I wanted to really become more aware of these things we see as ingredients. Usually they just come wrapped in uh, cellophane at the supermarket, and this was really reconnecting with that part of being human, procuring your own food. And we also forge blueberries. I'm not sure that made it into the show. But yeah, forging blueberries, not so much. <laughs> not, yeah. not 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 I think we have, you said you came off the coast of several grizzly bears. I think we have a clip of that. So let's, let's watch. watch. This one is a full-grown, mature adult. It's a big one. Now he's running. He is sprinting. Just flying in. Are these close calls part of the thrill of the whole thing? For me, yeah, the, the kind of hunting, like Tim and I went hunting too, which he, he recounts in his book. We went hunting one time in South Carolina for deer. And, and as fun as that is, it's, it's a tame experience relative to this. So I wanted to also take him out and show him what would be an extreme version of hunting. And, and that kind of hunting, like in remote areas such as Northwest Alaska, is very immersive. You know, I mean, you, there's no room to think about other things. You're just you're constantly focused on what you're doing, and, and that presence of bears keeps you awake. I like. I rather prefer to be keep around. Keep me awake too. Yeah, great <laughs> sense. They keep me awake. Yeah, I wouldn't well, say so much. It's not just the hunting, and, and, and Tim, I think you notice this also. You're not just going out there to hunt the animals. Once once you get them, it's also the the field dressing and skinning, yeah. which you enjoyed, right? It's the most interesting part of the process for me. Huh. So the the pulling of the trigger isn't that interesting. Like don't I don't like enjoy that. killing animals per se, but I do enjoy really having that first-hand experience of taking what we see as an entire animal and then converting it into meals. And that was really eye-opening and life-changing for me. That's sort of your whole philosophy. If you're going to kill it, you're going to eat it. Yeah, you should be responsible for it, yeah. I think. So we've been waiting long enough now. So please, tell us what you brought with you. What I brought, I brought some uh, jerky from 
the hunt that Tim and Tim and I went on. So this Alaskan right here, Alaskan jerky. That, that's yeah, made you know homemade jerky from there. So it was we were right. being locavores up there, and now we're eating real far away. It's made of this is venison. Nope, sorry, that's caribou. This is caribou. So we, yeah, by one definition, venison, but that's caribou jerky, and then How good. Was it? No, it's good. It's huh? good. I mean, I'm a it's big not like fan. that heavily processed mm -hmm. stuff you get off gas station racks. No, you know, this it, is not a Slim Jim. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. It's clean. <laughs> and then this the other day, I was just hunting buddy, with a buddy of mine. We were hunting squirrels and rabbits. He's a chef, so he took home the catch and made a squirrel rabbit ragu. Nice brought cool. it over to me, and he'd probably be horrified to know that I'm now you giving it away. You said just the other day? I mean, when was this squirrel running? Uh, not even a week ago. Not even a week ago. Yeah. And this is your wedding china? It is. <laughs> and and, and I'll, I'll have you know that's not the first squirrel to come across that plate. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. And, and if you could for me, because Berman's tasting it, what does squirrel taste like? Chicken. No, no, no. no. It, can take, it can take on whatever you do with it. I, if you had someone over and, and I was serving this to them, I could tell them that it was chicken. And, and unless they were, it? Unless they were, you know, like a sommelier or something, I mean, they might just eat it and think it was good. It's, it has a richness. It's different than chicken. It's How's like, it going I, for I equate it most to like the dark meat on a turkey. It's a dark meat. It's not just yeah. for breakfast anymore. It's squirrel. the dark meat. <laughs> it, this is this. You could be one of the guys. You are putting that whole thing down. Squirrel is early starving. in the morning. You know. I'm starving. You guys are the best. Thanks for coming. Go for it. Eat Thank it. Uh, Thanks, guys, so much. We should mention as you continue eating your squirrel that the third season of Meat Eater premieres this Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern time on the Sportsman Channel. Pleasure to meet you both. Best Thank of luck. You. Thank you.